and welcome to Ask the Expert. My name is Christopher and I'm your host. On today's episode, we are in Germany for the high-end show in Munich. With me today, I have Helle and Steffi from our HR team. Do you mind telling us a little bit about what it is that you do at Dynaudio? No, I'd love to. <laughs> I'm Helle and uh, I'm head of HR at Dynaudio. Uh, I'm uh, responsible for the entire employee life cycle. I do uh, the strategy uh, for HR. Mm-hmm. I uh, I'm responsible for the policies that we have. I'm responsible for adhering to uh, the love and the dedication that we have with our employees for the entire Dynaudio DNA, basically. So the culture mm-hmm. is very much at the center of what we do in, in HR. And of course, we do a lot of practical things to work with that. And Steffi is very much at the center of that. Yeah. yeah. So I have my daily base at Dynaudio and and spend a lot of time around the employees. Also, I'm I'm dealing a lot of with in the recruitment process and uh, and talking to candidates. So uh, so we have both the internal and external point of view here. And I guess working in HR, you meet everyone in the company, right? Exactly. Right. It's, it's everyone, and the you have so many different people that you, to yeah. talk with, yeah. right? That, you get that's to meet an everyone. exciting part. It is the, exciting. So it's not just HR for management or HR for production. It's HR for everyone in the company. So we get to deal with both the production workers that we have yeah. that actually work in our factory every day, producing the fantastic, you know, loudspeakers that we do, and. Uh, We have the contact with the engineers that develop all the fantastic yeah. concepts, and uh, we have contact with uh, any other people that work with yeah. us selling the products throughout right. the world, placed everywhere, basically. Right. So uh, it's an exciting everyday life that we have. You know what's going on at Dynaudio. We try to okay. yeah, make it our business, basically. Very much. I think that we should jump into the questions. Is that okay with you? It's fine. Sure. Perfect. First question that I would like to to have answered to share with our viewers is, what does the the uh, recruitment process look like? What can I expect? Yeah. So, well, do you want to start off? Yeah. Well, um, the first thing that you would experience would be going perhaps on our website or meeting our job at at one of the different sites where we post it. Mm. So, our yeah, the candidate would apply by uploading a CV and his or her application uh, online. Next um, is us receiving it. And um, well, the process is that we do the coordinating the organization, but actually it's the hiring manager who uh, who reads the the job ad and the and the candidate's um, application. So it goes directly to who made concerns. And I guess that a process like that it varies in time, right? Because some positions you get a, a lot of applicants for, yeah. right? Yeah. And so there's no kind of fix for saying, oh, it's always a week. It's no. it really depends. On you you can set a target and say the optimal process would last a month or mm. a week or whatever. Right. But it's really really hard to live up to that because yeah. situations vary, as you say. Yeah. Sometimes you have a position where you have so many applicants that the screening process in itself just takes a long time. Yeah. If you have to give everyone a fair treatment exactly. and read their you know applications and look into their CVs and give them an answer. I guess and other times it's like you know you have very few applicants and it's really really hard because you actually do have to go out actively and look for people to apply for this position. So it's really really difficult to see say that something is set. Yeah. And I guess that when you're hiring, when you're going out and trying to find the right candidate, yeah. there's an emphasis on right here, exactly. right? Yes. Because you you do want to fill a position. I guess yeah. with someone where there's a match on in several different uh, areas, Practice, right? Yeah. Competencies, culture. Of course, exactly. So, yeah. and what is important to also remember when applying is that we are always uh, announcing the ideal situation. Mm. So, whether you are right, medium right, or you don't feel right at all for the position, we will always encourage everyone to apply and that's because a really good it's point, really yeah. the argumentation yeah. for why you are the right match that we are listening to not necessarily what we thought would be the perfect match because i know that you know when you write a job application that oh you see a job ad sometimes you're oh yes i fit on these five points but number yeah. six not that's so not sure. me no. uh, 
I put it to the side, right? Yes. And, and so we would love for you to apply anyway. Yeah. yeah. Don't rule it out beforehand. Just uh, give it a shot and send us your resume, send us your... Uh, we'll argue the applications, yeah. right? Because yeah. I mean, cover letter with the reason why you want to work with Dynaudio, yeah. why you think it's the perfect match regardless. And we'll look into it, and we'd love to meet you and, and talk to you, basically, if, they, if it is a match. We have uh, you know, various steps uh, that we go through to find out whether it is the right match. Mm -hmm. You will, as an applicant, if you are considered uh, after the screening to be a candidate that we want to talk to, you will meet both the hiring manager. More often than not, you will meet uh, a peer, a colleague from that function that you will be uh, applying to. Uh, to find out whether the competencies are there and whether you would fit into that mm. uh, atmosphere, the culture, the whatever group of people that you're applying to work with. And then you'll meet HR as well, because we have another role in the whole process, trying to figure out whether the cultural match is right for the entire company, whether the credentials are real, we take references, and we also give you a test to go through, which will look into both your personality mm. and various aspects of that, and we'll have a discussion with you on the basis of that. Yeah. We don't want you to be scared from no. the process. Oh. It's always really, really nasty yeah. to be tested and you feel put on the spot, but there's no need to basically because there's no right or wrong. Can you say anything about, uh, you were talking about this, a, a need for a match of competencies, mm -hmm. obviously there's a, a need for a match in culture and then yeah. there's the test. Mm -hmm. Is there any uh, one of these three that we emphasize when we have to choose a candidate? So if, let's say, it's all 100%, then 80% is the test, no, probably not the, like the that. No, the test is not 80%. As I was trying to say before, it's not, there's no right and wrong answer. It's only a basis of a conversation. It gives us some ideas what we need to dive a little more into, what we could ask more you know, in-depth questions about. Is there anything that we should be aware of in terms of what you prefer, what you like, what you need from your manager and stuff like that. So it gives us a little bit of a, of a, of a cutting edge in terms of being precise in our conversation with you. Mm. But it doesn't mean that we say, okay, now we have the test result, this is you. Yeah. So it's not, that's not the way it works, luckily. So we put a lot of emphasis on both the qualifications. It goes without saying that the, if the qualifications yeah. are not there, right. we have to talk a little bit more about that. So but the cultural I match is really, really important as well. So if the cultural match is not there, I mean, even if you do have the qualifications, you may not be right for the position. Sometimes we say it's easier to put qualifications on you over time than it is to create the cultural match. So we need the right people who really want to work with this company and find it equally fantastic as the rest of us do, basically. But how many, Steffi, how many people can you expect to meet when, when you're at if you get to the next round and you get invited to a, an interview at, at Dynaudio, it, should I expect that there's eight people staring me down or is, it, uh, is there a, a, you know, just a, an equal? Well, you, would, uh, you can expect to get probably a call from me because um, I'll call you up and invite you um, to the interview. And at the interview, as I was saying, it's normally the hiring manager who, uh, who greets the candidate. And uh, the hiring manager will normally have a, a, a peer or a partner from the department. So you'll meet one of the team members, which is really essential for, for the job and the match. Um, so I think that uh, you should be very aware that it's not, it's not the criteria that comes first, really. It's, it's the match of the, of the personal charisma. And if these people find uh, a fitting match to both the team and, uh, and the company. So that's what the candidate has a chance of, of evaluating as of the first meeting. So for the second round, then you would have to meet me or Helle for, for the second round of okay. interview. So there is only for the second uh, interview where you've got into the company, normally you, uh, you are invited out on, on our uh, What's uh, called factory, right? yeah. 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 Um, so where we where we live, and uh, you have a feeling that that you are invited into it. So the second interview will be a very uh, relaxed conversation with uh, normally Helle, who uh, who gives some feedback for the interview mm. and um, and for the test. So that's yeah. that's really it. It uh, it's normally not more than three people that you that you are confronted with. 
So if we scroll all the way back, the process, as I see it and as I understand it now, is that you apply, you learn about the position, you write an application, you apply. If you go through uh, the first layer of uh, of checking up, uh, um, then there is an you get a call, it's an interview, and again, if you pass that, there's a second interview. Right. What does it look like from that point? Is there a, you know, this is how it always looks, or does it vary a lot on the number of applicants or the position? When you get to that step, the field is really narrowed down quite a lot. So you will only have two or three uh, okay. candidates left. So it doesn't take that long from there. You quite, you know, rapidly go into a phase where you actually get a yes or no. Yeah. We're interested in, in going on and negotiating with you on certain criteria on, you know, the conditions for an employment, so salary, which is always nice <laughs> to talk about, and, you know, working hours, references, tasks and responsibilities, titles, whatever can be, you know, discussed. Mm. And then... If you actually reach an agreement from that, it's it's more or less from day to day no. that we can say, okay, here's the contract. We'd love you to sign, so please come and join us. And from there on, it's a question of saying oh, the starting date is first of next month. We'll be waiting for you at nine o'clock. Yeah. We'll be having a lovely breakfast with you in your new department. And from there on, we have a fine onboarding process that you'll be following. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that Steffi can tell you lots more about that, actually, in detail, uh, which is really, really good because it gives you sort of a head start in the company where we take care of you in the beginning and see to it that you are actually not left to your own devices, but you're yeah. held on board, yeah. which Sounds is really important, yeah. important for us. Yeah. So I was uh, unfortunate not to be chosen for the position. What happens next, Steffi? Well, you will uh, get an, an email from us with a... Uh, with, uh, a reply at a rejection if you're not one of the chosen for to run in for the position. Okay. So you will definitely receive an answer from us, and uh, the sooner the better. And um, I know that there's a lot of companies that hold on to applications. Do we do the same? Well, yes, we um, we will ask you uh, if it's okay for you as a candidate to for us to hold on to your application for okay. the six month period that. Okay that we um, are allowed to. And is it like that you then have to go into that database and say, oh, we have this position, there's these three candidates that might be, uh, be a fit for it? Yeah, we might do that. That's uh, the whole idea behind actually keeping people's, uh, yeah. you know, reference uh, papers and, and applications. So if we have a, another position open in a certain area, for instance, an engineering job within a certain field and we've had that recently as well, then we might look into the same pool of applicants that we had then to see if there's someone that might still be relevant and interesting to us. Yeah. Is it still a good idea to, even though that we're imagining that I'm an applicant and that I know that you kept my application, mm -hmm. is it still a good idea for me to reapply? It's always a good idea to reapply because yeah. then we'll know that you're still interested, actively seeking, and we're not, you know, calling you in vain and disturbing you if you've actually moved on to another position somewhere else and not interested anymore in, in actually moving on. So, so yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Always a good idea always to apply. Always a good idea. Perfect. Thank yeah. you. Guys, I think that we uh, we were we covered all of my questions. So. Um, I want to say thank you for taking your time out of, uh, of your calendar today and, and joining yeah. me. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for the pleasure. And uh, thank you for watching. Uh, keep the questions coming, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>